Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Chandra Alexander. I'm the Vice President of Development at Global Fund for Women, and I am delighted to welcome you to this month's Voices of Equality call, where we take a journey to Brazil. Just a week and a bit ago, several of us traveled from staff and board, along with companions, donors and supporters, interested individuals who are concerned about the state of women's movements globally, to Brazil to learn from women directly to hear from them about their challenges, their successes, and begin to have a collective conversation, a courageous conversation about what we can do together to improve the situation around the world and strengthen movements for women's human rights globally. Before we get started, I wanted to invite everyone to ensure that if you're calling into this webinar, you mute your phone. If you're on an iPhone, simply touch your mute button. If you're on an Android, you can do that with a star six. On the right side of your control panel, you'll also see a chat window. You can use that to raise your hand if you have a question and type into the question box. At the end of our call, we will be sure to gather those questions and respond to them accordingly. We are being joined today by several of our travelers, including our board member, Jerema Wormick, who's calling in from Brazil, and our CEO, Masimbi Kanyuro, who was a key galvanizer of this uh, excursion and uh, on-the-ground engagement with our partner, Women's Fund. So looking forward to having them, in, uh, as well as all of us engaged in that conversation as we uh, take a look at the situation. Uh, through the eyes of our travelers. I also wanted to let you know that this webinar is being recorded. We'll have an opportunity afterwards to share that link with you so that you can in turn share it with your friends, colleagues, and so on. So as we get into the webinar, I wanted to provide some framing context for you and let you know a little bit about why we did this trip. And then we'll turn it over to Masimbi a little bit more about the state of the state, what's going on in Brazil, the importance of our visit at this particular time, our work with Ellis, the Women's Fund in Brazil, and the strategic role of women's funds, as well as issues of racism, sexism, homophobia, and our reflections on similarities and differences with the current political situation in the United States. Of probably about eight months or so ago, and we brought together a partnership among Global Fund for Women, Women Moving Millions, and Women Donors Network to facilitate outreach across different audiences and bring together a, a wonderfully diverse group of philanthropists, investors, and activists to help ensure that we could engage with women and take back any learnings that we weren't otherwise able to gather on our own and continue the conversation much more broadly. Part of the reason for this call and this webinar is certainly to allow you to experience what we experienced and participate in deeper sharing, deeper reflection at a time when so much is really, I think, important uh, for the lives of women and girls in looking at what we can do to ensure that we strengthen their ability to be successful, whether it's in Brazil or in any other country around the world. The journey itself began in Sao Paulo and we continued on to Rio de Janeiro we brought in women's groups from both of those cities as well as the surrounding areas and also invited to join us from Brasilia and Recife in the northern part of Brazil, different activists and individuals working on, in particular, issues surrounding sexual health and reproductive rights. We had 15 participants and we had not only staff but, as I mentioned, board members. And again, our board member, Jerema, is going to be sharing a little bit more from her on-the-ground perspective about what the trip meant for her and what it meant to the colleagues with whom she works day in and day out in Brazil. We spent a week there with uh, over 20 grantee partners uh, and enjoyed all levels of engagement from individuals working through uh, movement and dance, story, and different forms of advocacy and activism through the arts to scholars, academics, people working on policy, and other forms of engagement at various levels in Brazilian government and society. Global Fund for Women in Brazil has made 270 grants to 122 groups since 1989. We have made a significant investment and, in fact, as part of our commitment in the region, the Latin American and Caribbean region, given our experience on this trip, we have 
made a commitment to prioritize our engagement in Brazil and look forward to continuing that conversation with the groups that we visited as well as our partner in the Women's Fund, Ellis. Specifically in the region, we have also made investments of 420 program grants, totaling just over $6 million. Our contributions over time have been significant, and again, the work that we do is dedicated to ensuring that women and girls are strong, safe, powerful, and heard, and that the movements that they support on the ground are strengthened, are sustained, and ensuring that when their work and we support again women's funds including Ellis. Uh, we have supported Ellis in fact with 19 grants since 1999 totaling almost $600,000. We're excited for that partnership and commitment and look forward to sharing with you a little bit more through the eyes of our CEO Ms. Simbi Kanyoro about the importance of women's funds. What I'd like to do is just take a moment to check. We have uh, our callers traveling uh, and calling in not only from Brazil, and welcome, Jurema, and thank you for joining us, um, but Masimbi is also in Europe, and so I just want to check. Masimbi, are you on the line with us? Okay, so we're not entirely sure if Masimbi's on yet, but we know that she'll be joining us, and I think what I'd like to do then is just provide a quick intro to you, Jurema, um, and have you tell us a little bit about your experience um, and also what you heard from the grantee partners with whom we visited. I think it might also be wonderful if you could provide a little bit of the context for us when we were preparing for this trip and in fact our webinar last month we had a wonderful conversation with Global Fund for Women's former board member Jacqueline Patangi who is an expert on issues affecting women and girls in Brazil and we were able to have a frank dialogue with her about sexual health and reproductive rights in your country. Jurema, let me provide a quick introduction to you and then we can hear your perspective. Uh, Jurema was born in a slum in Rio de Janeiro and she was actually the first in her family to attend university. Her activism was nurtured in the student movement. Jurema is a co-founder of Criola, a black women's organization, and articulation of Brazilian black women organizations. And Jurema, we met with a number of your colleagues and supporting organizations when we were in Brazil and really learned quite a lot through their eyes. Uh, Jurema is also a visiting scholar of the Federal University of Rio, a member of the Civil Society Advisory Group of UN Women in Brazil, and she's on the Board of Trustees at the Brazil Human Rights Fund. She also, of course, is a member of Global Fund for Women. Welcome, Jurema. Hello, Chandra, and hello, <laughs> everybody. I'm, I'm pleased to be here and to tell you a little bit more about how it was to me to, to receive you and the donors here in Brazil. I think it's, it was a, a, an amazing, a huge opportunity. Uh, I don't know if everybody is aware, but Brazil, Brazil is a quite famous country, famous because the carnival, the soccer teams, and the so-called racial democracy. And recently they started to talk about Brazil as a country related to social justice. They used to say it because the recent po public policy on, on ending hunger and, in, and, and the inequality policy. But all the narratives we have, we have about, about Brazil, it never, it never have the, the perspective of women. And I think one of the, the important uh, things related to this visit to Brazil is to to donors and to everybody to have to hear about us, the Brazilian women, our our history, our perspective, our analysis, and so on. I would like to give you a little bit a little bit more about the context here when the visit is hap was happening. I don't know if you know Brazil. The majority of Brazilian population is female, and, and we, the black women, we are about one hundred million, 100 million, 100 million yeah, women, black women in Brazil. We have a huge women's movement here that is struggling for many decades and centuries, but in the last couple of decades we are struggling a, a little bit more. 
we have been struggling to amplify the rights we, we, we have. And in, this, in recent years, we are struggling uh, to avoid setbacks. And we are talking about setbacks because these are sponsored by, a cons by conservative movements that are organized not only in, in, as NGOs and groups, but are in the Congress. They are the majority in the Con Brazilian Congress. And the conservative movements, they, what they do every day are attacks on sexual and reproductive rights, as Jacqueline had the opportunity of, to tell you. The attacks the affirmative action policies, and I mean affirmative related to black population, related to indigenous people, related to LGBTQI people, and so on. And they also are promoting setbacks on black traditional, black and indigenous traditional territories and so on. This is a, a very delicate moment. In this every moment, right now, the, the Senate, Brazilian Senate is voting to, are deciding against the first pres, women, first woman president we have. Uh, they are probably we will she will lose the presidency today or tomorrow, and it means that there are the the conservative they are not organized but they are they are so so strong right now and they they are controlling the public policies in Brazil and it is it is so dangerous to women it is it is so dangerous to black women, but in the same mo very moment the women's movement is quite active and strong. We, we, we are not sure, I don't know exactly how many, of it, but how many women's organizations we have right now on the streets, how many are struggling right now against the setbacks, against the, this impeachment of the president and like something like this. But I can tell you that we are struggling in, in the last three, four or two years against the, the, the conservative. We are facing the so-called spring feminist spring that mean uh, the women's movement feminist movement uh, is starting is trying to to avoid the, the, the conservative way going to the streets and doing mm -hmm. huge demonstrations and if this feminist spring are, mobili are mobilizing especially young women in 2015 we had in Brasilia, the capital city of Brazil, we have the National Mar National Black Women's March against racism, against violence, and for the living well. This march took 50,000 black women to Brasilia against violence and racism, and to promote, to, the, to, to, to demand another kind of development, another kind of public policy to, to really improve the black women's lives. Uh, we are facing right now a, a movement that call Women for Democracy that are on streets right now doing demonstration against all this mob conservative mobilization and all this decision the, the, the conservatives in the National Congress are made, making today. And, the, it, and it, it, it was in this very moment that happened the visit of Global Fund for Women and the Donors and it was huge. It was very important. Uh, I received some calls from partners for activists, some feedback they, they gave me. And the, 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 the common speech was that it was a very important moment to you to come, to Global Fund for Women to come, to donors to come, to us, to black women's organizations, for, for black, to feminist organizations to activists. It was important to, to have the opportunity to tell our story, to tell our experiences, to tell our ways, our methodology, and mostly was important to tell you about the, the, the context, the crisis we are facing. That is an ethical, political crisis right now and how it puts in danger all the women's rights we used to have here. 
and all the women's rights you used to fight for. Uh, it was important to us to see face to face women who came to Brazil trying to understand, try to to know us a little bit more. And, and another common speech was that it was important to, to be face to face to women who really cares about us. It was something, it is something, we needed it. I mean, as we, we, are, we were struggling, we were also uh, feeling the sadness of the because because of all we are losing right now, and we are the sadness because we we saw the fra the fragile how fragile fragile was all all the all the things we conquered all the rights we we, we conquered, and then it was important to receive and, and interact with the other woman and see the the interest and their care about. Not on our lives and struggle, but our, in our in our ways of face this context. I think. Shirema, I, it, oh, sorry. Oh, yes. I, I was just going to say that I, I I think apologies. I think that the solidarity was was uh, incredibly important both ways, and not only your expression of the care being felt, but I think the uh, the feeling from those who were able to be with you and with the other women and young women with whom we met, I think it was very, very much about understanding not only much more deeply the issues, the economic crises, the political challenges, and um, the, the concerns around uh, women's rights violations, whether it's uh, gender-based violence or other forms of violence, um, but really understanding that there are deep and powerful ways in which we are all connected. Uh, despite those geographic and, and particulars yes. of our struggle, that we are all connected. Um, I wanted to, Jerema, just take a, a quick moment to open up the conversation because I think Masimbi has now joined us. Uh, Masimbi, are you there and able to speak and we can hear you? Yes, I'm here and I'm able to speak. If you <laughs> hear some noise, it's because of uh, where I am, but I'm completely ready um, to speak. What? Wonderful. Thank you so much. So let me provide a quick introduction to Masibi Kanyaro, our president and CEO. Dr. Kanyaro is an accomplished leader with three decades of experiencing managing international non-governmental organizations, NGOs, uh, global programs and ecumenical agencies in cross-cultural contexts. Um, she is an academician, a scholar, an activist, uh, and our fearless leader, not only for the organization, but in particular on this trip. Masimbi, you brought so much to the conversations that we were able to have with women in Brazil, um, bridging divides, enhancing our ability to have those courageous conversations. And I introduced a little bit earlier that you might speak to uh, your experience, but also, of course, the importance of our visit at this time, our work with women's funds, and the strategic role that Global Fund for Women plays, and how you saw that play out over the course of our time in Brazil. Thank you so much, Chandra, for the introduction, and more specifically to Jerema our board member for just your uh, presentation, which I had all of it. I joined when you were beginning, and that's really good to be able to have had you, be able to share the experience you had in welcoming us to your country and hosting us. So for those of us that, uh, those of you that have joined us on this uh, webinar, I just want to thank you for being there and to say, having been part of this visit, with the women of Brazil, real made it very clear to me why we exist and why it is important for us to be in solidarity. And I must just admit, as a, a black woman who was hearing the plight of all women in Brazil, and specifically with a focus on black women, I think it really also changed the way I look at countries that it widened that aspect of the fact that we have to look at who among the populations that we serve will help us to understand even the depth of the human rights. This time it was the black women of Brazil. And I know for us in the Global Fund, it just means being really open to see 
in every country where we work, where is going to be our big entry that will make the biggest difference. So I was, um, I learned a lot of things. One was the Global Fund has been investing in Brazil, supporting the women's human rights right from the time of its inception and hasn't given up on the women. So this one woman who leads one of the organizations told me a story that really brought home everything that I have read about the Global Fund but wasn't part of the beginning of the Global Fund because she said she found a little newspaper where the Global Fund was mentioned and that is 19 years ago and she said she had an idea of how she would be able to make a difference to women's human rights in her context. So she wrote to the Global Fund in Portuguese in a handwritten piece of paper and the Global Fund responded to her and not only did they support her to develop methods of forming that organization, they gave her the funding and then they accompanied her and she's still a grantee of the Global Fund. Um, she got that first grant but what she says it was the accompaniment and giving her the skills both for organizational development and also the skills on how she would be able to develop um, a way of fundraising for her organization which has grown, she's older and they have intergenerational leadership that is going on at this particular time. That story is a story of things that we've read about the Global Fund, accompanying women, not leaving them alone, believing in them, trusting that the ideas are important, and promoting and supporting those ideas to grow. And so many of the groups that we met that had had funding either through the Global Fund or through ELAS, which was another example for us of the early investment in helping to create that wonderful extraordinary women's fund in Brazil. Its leadership, its innovative programs. One I would like to mention, for example, how do you reach young people? And there we were able to see a group of young people who have the possibility to reach other young people through rock music and advocacy and human rights. So we saw groups after groups determined and looking forward to not only influencing change of decision in their own uh, country, but also really part of uh, the whole global human rights for women. And we were there, as Yurema has explained, at a very crucial time where we were helped by the women of Brazil, different women at different times, to understand in the depth that no newspaper would have explained to us about what is going on politically and what is going on in communities. And we were able to be part of that experience. And I think we've come back reading the papers and listening in a different way. Um, and um, what that calls for me as important is this whole notion of networking, connections, uh, global solidarity and that what happens to women in one place could happen in another place. We are able to link this with what we are hearing in our own uh, space in the US political campaign. We hear some of those voices, the similar things that we had in Brazil. And so I want to just say it was an opportune time, a place for us to build more confidence in the work of the Global Fund in the work of women's funds as exemplified by ELA, the women's fund in Brazil, and specifically and even more deeper in the women activists on the ground who themselves are putting their lives online. And I want to uh, express great thanks through Jurema and also to say to all of you who are on this webinar and who continue to support and think about uh, the lives of women in many places of the world. We are in this for a long time and we are there to stay and we are on the right path. I want to stop there. Thank you, Ms. Simbi. Thank you so much. And uh, 
Jurema, I want to turn back to you because some of what Ms. Simbi said not only reinforces some of your reflections earlier, but it also reminds me of the very particular work that you did in helping to galvanize the Black Women's March. And I, I would love to hear uh, you share a little bit about that experience and, and also about um, your reflections since then on uh, what that has meant for not just black women in Brazil, but all women who care about women's human rights in the country. Yes, Chandra. Uh, the preparation of the Black Women's March in Brazil, we, it was something strong. I mean, we started two, three years ago uh, discussing in the, in the ground, discussing among black women that we need to prepare ourselves to show our face as one of important uh, part of Brazilian society, the ones who are always, always left behind, but it was our time to say to the Brazilian society that stop, we are here and we are demanding and struggling for social justice and social justice in the face of black women. And then it was an uh, experience extremely, extremely uh, moving. I mean, as we openly, when we start to open the, the the invitation for black women to come to prepare the march, it happens aut almost automatically. I mean, as we, uh, as we made a call for black women to come, they came in every city of the country, in, e in every state of the country, every region of the country. It was interesting to see because we, we, they, they came just because they were black and they felt that it was the, their moment to come. And it, that was amazing because as, you, as we, you, you probably know, black women in Brazil because of racism, black women are the poorest among the poor. We don't have, even our organization don't have enough money to provide them to come. But they, they, then they start to make dinners, to sell handicrafts, to, do, to sell food, to do what, whatever they were able to do, only to prepare meetings to invite other women to come and to discuss. As we were, were able to bring together many, many, uh, 50, as I told you, it was... 50, it was uh, uh, 50,000 black women and to Brasilia, it means that we, are, we were able to mobilize even more in every city, in every state, in every region and they, they brought this 50,000 as representative of that many millions that were not able to come. It was important to say that as we made the uh, open call to donors, mostly the women's funds to, to come to support we, us, we, we, we received a good, good response. Uh, Funduelas, Global Fund for Women, Mama Cash, they, they came to get a, a urgent action fund. They came together with us to support us, to give some funds to us to pay for the, the infrastructure that we need to receive 50,000 women in Brasilia. It was emotional, but was political also. As we were there, we can face the, the happiness in the, faces, in the faces. We brought girls, we brought teenagers, we brought adult women, and we brought the elders ones. We, we, we brought women from the union organization, women from domestic workers organizations, we, women from, from favelas, from slums organizations, we, we artists, we, we brought women from everywhere, all the diversity of black women and as we were there we were so happy, so happy, happy and committed with the struggle, it was important and I think it was one of the reasons that that provide us the, the energy that we need to continue the struggle at, in this moment of the of in the conservat against the conservative wave we are facing.
Thanks, Jerema. And just for everyone on the call, a reminder that you can type in questions into your chat window or raise your hand if you have a question, and we'll be including those in the conversation as it continues to unfold. Um, Jerema, I, I wish we had more photos to share with people because I think, as you, you expressed it well, just the vibrancy of so many women gathered together, so many supporters in the streets of Brasilia, um, just incredibly, incredibly powerful. If you could say there was a, a sort of key learning or insight or a key impact that was made, what would you say? How would you share that with folks who are listening in? About the march, well, I think the march was... Uh, it was emotional, as I told you, is an emotion, and also it was an energy, political energy to continue the struggle and this happiness. It was happiness and sisterhood. Uh, there are so many words, I don't know how many words, because as you told, Chandra, it is so emotional, it's so vibrant. It was on, in November, last November, but I can't feel, just like it was yesterday, you see, it was something, it is something, and that's why we are we continue the mobilization right now. Yeah, absolutely, and I, I think that continuance of energy is something that, as Ms. Mb said, Global Fund for Women is so keen to support, as are the women's funds, uh, just to ensure that we can sustain that momentum. Ms. Mb, in your reflections on the trip just last week, uh, I'm wondering if there was a particular group, I know of course you're very familiar with these organizations and these uh, modes of activism, but if there was something that stood out in your mind that you might be willing to share with us, a particular highlight, story, or engagement uh, with a group or even a particular woman that uh, you, you'd care to highlight? Yes, thank you, Sandra, and thank you, Jerema. Uh, for me, it was the innovation that almost all the group had, because if you had asked me for a strategy for them to work on the question of uh, vi preventing violence or speaking out on violence or economic possibilities and empowerment or even participation in the political agenda, I would not have been able to come up with the various innovations that we had. So, for example, when we visited Candomble House, which is a place started by women, um, um, really with some kind of like uh, religious frame to be able to to actually um, be able to to claim their space within their Afro Brazilian religion, uh, where the women have a, a lot of leadership. What I saw with that group when we visited. Um, we saw them that they were able to determine how they wanted to deal with the issues of uh, leadership within the religious sphere. They were able to look at the question of violence, the questions of race, and they had economic activities as well happening in the same space. But it was also a welcome place that was not just for them. It was welcoming everyone, every woman, so that they would know what needs to happen this idea that they were not a closed in group. And then they were able to host us, and not only host the visiting group, but really have their hands out welcoming possibility for all of the different groups that we were able to listen to in that particular place. Another program that really impressed me was how another group using the issue of um, uh, uh, I would have even called it like food, but the uh, the terminology, if you remember, was uh, was it gen genomics? <laughs> was it? Do you remember uh, Chandra and Jerema? The issue of coming to the society through uh, uh, gastronomy, through through food, and then creating both an opportunity for people to speak about their life, to train to have an economic possibility, etc. I talked about the rock group, but also another group, another area that really impressed me is how all of these groups have embraced technology and social media. Because where they are not able to get press that is written, they can bypass and use social media to communicate, to call people together, to expand their work, to work smarter. And that was just amazing for me to see. I would never have imagined 
that uh, that much use of technology and social media was happening in the groups that we work with. So they just like they 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 surprised me beyond expression. Their their success, their knowledge of Facebook, their um, um, ability to create new friendships and to use these media, not just as uh, um, um, media for their own sake, but to use them to fulfill the ends to which they want their advocacy work to be had. Very very strong advocacy. I came back feeling when we say as the Global Fund that we have two um, important missions that we fulfill, that we are a grant making organization to support women, women's human rights, but we also want to be an advocacy organization that amplifies their voices. I know that we have a source in Brazil and we have many voices which can partner, which, with whom we can partner to amplify the issues of human rights. So that was important for me. And the final one that I want to talk about was also being connected with our former board member, Jacqueline Pitange. She was a board chair of the Global Fund many years ago, but hasn't forgotten the organization. She still cares for those issues in Brazil and elsewhere. And the most articulate subject that she has devoted her time for and was able to expand our understanding on was the Zika virus. In fact, I was late on this forum because I was speaking exactly about that. This morning I, in my presentation, I talked about the work of women in Brazil in terms of worrying and caring and wanting attention that has a feminine and a women's approach to uh, understanding and addressing Zika. And what Jacqueline did for us and many other women in Brazil was to help us to understand who is most affected, what is available for them, what is missing, and what we can do about it. And I think that we have a responsibility now to take those voices, whether it's on Zika, on violence against women, on racial discrimination, and so on, and be able to package in such a way that we can claim our part as amplifying the voices of these women. Simbi, thank you so much. Um, whether it's through those advocacy efforts or the on-the-ground mobilization that Jerema was talking about with 50,000 women coming together in the streets, I think we have some incredible strategies. Um, Jerema, could you address any additional strategies that women's rights groups are utilizing to draw attention to the issues that they care most about? Yes. Uh, as we saw in, during the visit of Global Fund for Women, uh, the women are working in different with different strategy. As we saw the the ones that we can call hackers, yes, using the internet and the technology as a tool, an important tool to to, to strengthen the voice. We saw also uh, in in the Candomblé uh, we visited. Uh, this they use the power of being a religions a religious leader as a way to pro as a, a, a tool to protect the women's lives against violence uh, because they have they use the authority the religious authorities they have not only in the religious community but in in the in the neighborhood in the city to protect the women's lives and it is an important strategy because they are protecting the lives. Uh, we saw also uh, the strategy of organizations who are doing uh, capacity building to other organizations, women to other grassroots organizations. They are giving the, them information, tools, and opportunity to build their own strategies. There are lots of uh, uh, important methodologies that they are using. We saw uh, uh, in Sao Paulo, probably we, we had uh, Global Fund for Women and Donor had the opportunity to, to meet uh, the, 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 the organization who works with the information brought by psychology, uh, black women's organization who's with psychology to, 
to explain to broader society how how the racism impact their lives, uh, how the racism against women impacts the lives of black black and white person, and how to to do to improve uh, self self improvement to to fight racism in in a deep deep way. We had uh, many opportunities to see uh, uh, organizations who are working in the streets, in the in the commercial streets, uh, where the poor women goes to 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 do their their shops, and then there to they they provide information and tools about rights, about sexual reproductive rights, about labor rights, about health and so on. So I, I mean, we had the opportunity to meet many uh, smart and creative women. They are creating different strategies to be close to other women, to close to other sisters and to give them support, information and to, 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 to struggle. Thanks, Jurema. I've got another Natasha, question for you. Can I allow me one oh. minute? Yes. Sure, of course. I gave a shout to two women who are my colleagues, and I didn't know them as much as this trip helped me to know them. One is Jurema, who has just spoken. As uh, I don't know if many of you know, but Jurema is a medical doctor who has devoted her time to listen to what the communities need and be responsive to them. And I learned while in Brazil that she is working now in the communities without pay. She feels that the communities that she's working in are so poor that giving her time and everything that she has for that community is what makes a difference. I know that Jerema is not going to tell you that. But the fact that I learned it only on this trip was so important and enduring to me and really also helped me to see and value those people who volunteer for this work without any pay. And a number of volunteers also told us that they give their, work, their time to this work without pay, something that we never actually put in the budget of the country or in the budget of the women work. The hours, endless hours. And what this means, if you're going to do a job that is full-time, like Jurema, without a salary, it means you've, give, you've got to give up a lot for the sake of the people. And I want to thank you, Jurema, say you put a big challenge on all of us on what sacrifices that women like you make and specifically you, in addition to also doing the work that you do on the board. Then another person that I would like to be able to acknowledge also with much deep appreciation was my colleague and friend, Kaka Verede, who is the CEO of Kaka, of, 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 of ELA. And we know, we've known each other, but um, in this particular trip, her own leadership and vision for the group that she is leading and her generosity of heart to open these groups to the visitors from the USA to see them as they are and to articulate the, in very clear terms the vision of her Ella, the Women's Fund was also really impressive and gave me even further depth of our relationships as colleagues of with leaders of women's fund, and specifically um, the reason why we need to give also uh, resources to support women's funds to grow in countries and take up stronger leadership as we saw happen in Brazil. And I wanted to be able to acknowledge that as well. Thank you, Ms. Simbi. Um, certainly incredibly well-deserved. Jeremy, I have a question for you that comes from one of our participants on this call. You know, in, in the not too terribly distant future, we have an opportunity with the Olympics coming to Brazil, potential opportunity. And the question is really around, is this a good time for women's human rights activists to 
uh, find a platform to amplify their voices uh, to an international audience? Is that opportunity available and is it being taken? Sure, it is a, a huge opportunity. What happens, but the way we are trying to, uh, we, are, we are preparing some uh, demonstrations and activism. Many of women's organizations, many human rights organizations, we are prepared to, to do this and to dialogue with the, the, the people who will come to the, the games. But it's important to say that the, the, the commercial media, the open media, they, we are, they are not with us. <laughs> they, they, were, they are against us. And then this is an important way to amplify our voices, is to find a way to connect directly with with the people because we and we are doing this with the internet and the, the support of independent journalists and media uh, organizations and and also with in partnership with different other organizations in the field to do this yes sure the the games the olympic games is a very important moment to to amplify the voices of our to amplify our voices and, and struggle. Same happens with the soccer games in 2014 and it will be important right now to amplify our, our voices. I, I agree totally. Certainly hope that the, the strength of that opportunity is uh, something that benefits everyone. So thank you, Jerema. Ms. Simbi, from your perspective as an international community what are the kinds of things that you're looking for in order to help show our solidarity with the women and those we met in Brazil as well as of course in the region first of all I want to begin by saying the women who came to this trip as our donors our supporters and others were incredible in them we learned with them. We were able to connect with the issues in Brazil and also with the women in Brazil. And we came back almost on the same page, feeling cold, challenged, and uh, I have to think I knew about how solidarity with other women in other places really matters. So. I have begun by just expressing to that group that made the visit that there's something here that requires all of us to think about, to think about Brazil and at this moment of their need to stand with them to be stronger, to be able to provide and support their work, their strategies through different grant making and so I am asking a larger community, those on this webinar, to really stand in solidarity with us for us to be able to get more resources to support in an extensive way the women's movements in Brazil to do the work that they have demonstrated to us that they can do very well, they can do it at scale and they can do it with confidence that will make all of us proud for the benefit to communities, to the country, and to individual women as well. So I am determined that we find ways to remain in solidarity by larger or more grants to Brazil. I don't know yet how this will look like, but kind of the vision that I would like to propagate. The second aspect is that because we know that countries learn from each other, Brazil is in vicinity with other Latin American and Caribbean regions. And the whole region, we've been challenged in funding, finding and funding uh, the projects that we see are really very well governed by women because we just don't have enough resources to do that. And the reason we don't have enough resources is because the world believes that these countries whose economy 
has developed from very poor countries into medium income countries do not need external support. This is not true from what we know from the women's organizations. Yes, the national budgets may be at a different level, but the women's human rights defenders and movements are still claiming for place and they require our support. So part of my strategy is to think of Brazil also within the context of Latin American and Caribbean and to use that as an example of supporting a whole region, knowing that these things happen elsewhere, but we want to use this visit as an example to focus in Latin America and Caribbean region. So that's part of where I am now to develop with you and to invite greater partnership and support, both in thought leadership about what we could do, but also in financial support. Thank you so much, Ms. Simbi. Jerema, finally, from your perspective, I'm wondering if there are any particular ways you might share with those listening in what it is that you feel like you, your group, uh, your organization, and those you work with need the most. Uh, sorry, I, I didn't understand you, Sean. If, Can you repeat? If you Sure. If you were to prioritize or you were to, you know, if folks wanted to respond to Ms. Simbi's call and, and challenge even to stand in solidarity with you to help provide resources, to help amplify the voices of, of you and your colleagues, other women on the ground doing the important work, um, what, are the, what are the ways in which you would talk about what's needed most? What are some of the key messages you'd want to share to ensure that everybody really understood what the needs are, what your priorities are? Yes, uh, I think uh, there's key points that we have to, to, to deal with. One is the, 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 the women's movement, the black women's movement, the feminist movement, the young women movement, and so on. We really need solidarity. It means we need part, direct partnership. We ha we need to to dialogue to to have the opportunity to to amplify our voice and dialogue to other people to do so. It means we need resources and what kind of resources? We 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 need communication resources. That means communication is skills and technology. We need uh, we need to have the the. We need to, to have some resources to be there and struggle, to be there at the moment we, we are, we, they, needed, they needed us most. It means we need to, to, to support to capacity building, to, we need support to, to, to be there. And three, I think, we need, uh, uh, we need to network uh, broadly. Uh, as Musimbi said, this is uh, our experience here, here in Rio, and our experience here in Brazil is not uh, a single experience. Latin America is face the same problems, and we need to to, to deep the networks we have. We need to open new networks to in defense of democracy, in defense of women's rights in Latin America and Caribbean. We need to we need to have the opportunity to to meet our partners and to start to strategize how could we face and go through this moment that is come this conservative wave that is coming and is passing through our, to us and I, I see we need we need to be there we need to to continue the struggle and. As we are seeing the, 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 the political environment closing the window of democracy, we need lots of support right now. Jerema, thank you. And I think I speak for everyone on this call and certainly those who participated in the trip in saying we are standing with you. Thank you for all of the work you've done and continue to do. Ms. Simbi, any closing comments for you? We have enough time for your final remarks. Yes, thank you. Um, I don't know who is on the call, but 
in my position, I'm often required to be more specific than general. So I first said I want to prioritize finding resources inspired by this visit that will be directed to women's movement in Brazil and Latin America. But I want also to be able to say, at the moment, our immediate, really, seed money to make this be possible would be up to $3 million. Because we know that the absorption space for the groups can take more than that. But we think that that's a good space for us to establish how we could be able to work with many different women's movements in Latin America and in Brazil and create a base upon which we can build even much more um, targeted budgets for particular strategies that we could support to make uh, a difference in the lives of women in Brazil. This looks like, in Latin America and, and uh, Brazil, this looks in our setup like a lot of money. But what I'm trying to say is that there are so many organized women's movements. I had the opportunity to visit Chile about a year ago, and I saw similar ways that women organized for change. And I know that they, too, require our support. We've seen things that are happening in Central America, including the killing of human rights defenders working on environmental issues. And they need our support. For a long time, we've been supporting human rights defenders in Mexico. And we know what, that their lives are in danger, and they need our support. And we shouldn't forget the Caribbean. Haiti has been a country that we've done some really grant making that has given opportunity to women who are addressing violence, which became even exasperated after the earthquake. They have been involved in rebuilding, and we want to be with them, and so on and so forth. So we can name many of these things. A meeting of Latin American women's rights organizations took place a year ago. They call it the Encuentro. And there are many organizations gave us, or at least shone light on what they see as important for the continent. And that was followed by our own grantees meeting in Peru as well. And they identified for us strategies that now we have been able to package. So we have a story and we have facts that can back the figure that I'm putting out there for our supporters and friends to help us raise. And thank you so much for listening, for making your time, for standing with us for a long time. On this trip, there were donors who had been with the Global Fund from the beginning, some of whom I had never had the opportunity to meet and spend so much time with, and new people that are beginning to learn the Global Fund for the first time. And when we put all our energy together, our innovation together, our inspiration together, I know that we will be able to continue to be a force of good for the world and for women, and specifically in Brazil and Latin America. And I want to thank you, Jurema, as our board member and as a voice that we can listen to with respect and offer those of you on the webinar if you're in a city somewhere, in a place somewhere, and you do want to have opportunity to hear our sisters from this region, and specifically Jurema, who comes twice a year to the Global Fund Board meeting in the USA, please let us know, let Chandra know, and we will work with her and make her available to visit you in your town, in your city, or wherever you are. We want to do this for so many people as we, are, we have the opportunity to bring our partners from other countries to speak for themselves and to really give you the life experience that we had when we had opportunity to visit Brazil. We can bring Brazil to you, and we can bring Latin America and the rest of the world where we operate to you. 
please give us that opportunity. And thank you very much. Ms. Simbi, thank you so very much. Ms. Simbi Kenyuro, CEO and President of Global Fund for Women. And Jurema, thank you. Jurema Wernick, our board member, located in Brazil and co-founder of Criola. Thank you both so much for your time. Thank you to all of you who've joined us on, their, on this webinar this afternoon. Thank you for making the time to be with us. Thank you for your questions and for your own reflections and the time that you're taking to do that. As Ms. Simbi said, we're happy to continue to be a resource for you. If you have additional questions afterwards, feel free to be in touch with us. And of course, as soon as we're able to, we will get a link out with this recording to you so you can share with others in your network. Thank you so much for your time and have a wonderful rest of your day.